Take your Bibles and let's go to the book of Proverbs this morning. Let me add my welcome to those of you that are visiting with us. We pray God has already blessed you, our services so far. We're coming to an end of a series I've been preaching on the home and family. We've called it Celebrating Family. In the Proverbs, many of the Proverbs are Solomon as a father giving advice to his children. You'll see often, my son, then he gives his counsel or advice or shares a proverb. And we see that again in our text this morning, a wise, godly father giving his sons Good advice about deep ditches and narrow pits that are out in the world. He warns them of certain sins, immorality and drinking and all of this. You parents that are raising your children or still in the home, you ought to read Proverbs every day. Amen. You just get into the These are Proverbs for parents. And a lot of the advice you'll find here would be good things to pass on to your children. Stand with me as we read this morning, Proverbs 23, beginning with verse 23. He says, Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. And he that begets a wise child shall have joy of him. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bear thee shall rejoice. Now verse 26 is our key text, the key verse this morning. My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. Give me thine heart. That's a key to raising children, and for children to get the most out of their growing up under their parents' supervision. You may be seated. I want to look at this text from two viewpoints. First of all, I want us to look at it as it regards to your earthly father and mother. They're, they're saying, give me your heart. Then I want to look at it from the standpoint of our Heavenly Father. He also is saying, give me thine heart. First of all, we need to give our hearts to our earthly parents, to our father and mother. This is a father, Solomon, saying this to his son. Son, give me thine heart. What did he mean by that? First of all, let me just address this subject. Why, why children need parents? You, you children need parents. You know that, don't you? Because there's something young people need that they don't have. They need wisdom of years. They don't have that. They're young. They've not lived long. And the wisdom that comes with years is something they're going to have to borrow from somebody else. And the best advice you're going to get is going to come from godly parents. They love you. They want what's best for you. And they're saying, son, daughter, give me your heart. Because if you do, I'll help you. I'll help you avoid the pitfalls of life. Young people ought to give their parents their heart because they're older, they're experienced. They've been there and done that. Amen? Now I want you parents to help me out today. Don't sit there like a knot on a log because I'm going to need your help. Don't you have wise advice to give your children, your grandchildren? Don't you wish they would listen to you? Don't you wish they would give you their hearts? See, here's what's going on. Satan wants to steal their hearts. 
And he's been very successful in stealing the hearts of many young people and young adults because they reject what their parents have taught. They reject the way of their parents and their grandparents. And they're on a path to destruction. We can help them if they'll listen. But it's so sad to see young people and young adults who were raised in church and raised in a godly home, and yet they've rejected the training that they've received. Now, some of you, I know what you're saying, right? Now you're saying, well, preacher, you don't know my parents. My parents have a lot of faults. Well, join the crowd. There are no perfect parents. Amen? There are no perfect parents. They all make mistakes. God is saying, give your hearts to imperfect parents. The Bible does not say, honor thy father and mother if they're perfect. It doesn't say that. It does not say honor thy father and mother if they've never made a mistake. Now, honor thy father and mother because it's right that your days may be long on the earth. Some are going to cut their life short because of the dishonor and disrespect they give to their parents. Hey, boys, you ought to listen to your mom. All the mother said, amen. Listen to your mom when she's trying to talk to you about girls because she are one. And she knows what she's talking about. Listen to them. Girls, listen to your daddy. He knows about boys. He can protect you from a lot of pain if you'll just listen to him. Hey, girls, when you walk down the aisle on your wedding day, who gives you away? Daddy does, doesn't he? You don't give yourself away. Daddy gives you away. So let him have a little input about who he's giving you to. I think we ought to get back to the old days uh, when there was courting and, and there was adult supervision involved. We had a lot less problems back then than we do today. Children need parents. Now, I know some parents don't give good advice. I know some parents are not Christians, they're not believers, they're not godly. They don't believe in the Bible. They're not going to follow Bible principles. And if that's the case, still honor them. Listen to them and give them respect. But if they give you counsel that goes against the Bible, you obey the Bible. You follow God. Don't violate the word of God. Your heart belongs to God first. Secondly, think about what children can give their parents. We parents want two things from our children. We want their love. Amen. We want their love. And we want them to live right. Some parents back off when a child, a teenager, becomes rebellious. And instead of disciplining that child, they're afraid they're going to lose their love if they're too tough on them. Amen? So they compromise. They let them get away with things that they shouldn't. But you know what happens? The child stops respecting that kind of parent. The parent that won't stand up for what's right and won't hold them to boundaries will lose their respect anyway. Now, some parents are in a trap. They have a rebelling son or daughter, and these kids put them on a guilt trip that if we don't give them their way, we don't really love them. And they're going to be angry with us. And say hateful things to us. I'm reminded of a 14-year-old girl in St. Louis years ago. 
became very rebellious as a teen and very rebellious against her mother. And they would get into arguments, and one day this girl got so angry, she yelled at her mother, I'm tired of you trying to run my life. Just leave me alone. I hate you. I wish you were dead. Of course, that just crushed that mother. She took the daughter to their pastor and told the pastor what happened. The pastor looked at this girl and said, Susie, you didn't mean that, did you? You just said that in anger. Susie said, no, I meant it. I hate her. I wish she were dead. This went on for several days. One day, Susie's mom took her to school and dropped her off. She said, Susie, I love you. The girl just slammed the car door and stalked away. Later that afternoon, the pastor came and called the girl out of her class. He said, honey, I've got bad news. Your mom was in a car wreck. She passed away. Susie screamed. The hallways filled with her screams. No! No, my mom, I can't be dead. No. And at the funeral, she looked into the face of the woman who gave her life. The woman who fed her and took care of her when she was sick. The woman who taught her about Jesus. She said, Mom, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I said. I love you, Mom. And she said, for the rest of my life, I'll never forget the last words from my mother were full of hate. I thought about that. If your mom or dad died today, what were the last words you spoke to them? I'm glad my dad's been with the Lord now for many years, almost 40 years now. But you know, I'm glad that I don't have any regrets about what I've said to my dad. I have precious memories of our time together. I was young when he died. I was only 23. The last wedding my father performed was for Betty and I. And he died two months after we were married. But I'm glad I gave my dad my heart. I'm glad I don't have any regrets about that. Are you giving honor to your parents? Will you stand by a casket with regrets that you never gave them your heart? Are you the son or daughter that you ought to be? Talk to you adults also. Are you the son or daughter that you ought to be? Are you the son and daughter that God wants you to be? Are you the kind of child to your parents that you'd like to have when you become parents? Would you like to have a child like you? Amen. Would I want children? To treat me as I treated my parents? We, we reap what we sow, don't we? You rebellious teenagers, you got a lot to look forward to. You're probably going to have rebellious teenagers. You're going to reap what you sow. You say, well, I'm not going to have any kids then. I'd probably be better off if you didn't. Give your heart to your mom and dad. Let them protect you. Kids, let them protect you. When they say no, they're not being mean. They're trying to protect you. They're trying to keep you from harm. It's not good for you to get out and run all over God's creation unsupervised. Let them protect you. And listen to them. They'll give you good advice, but you ought to pay attention to it. Secondly, not only should we give our hearts to our 
earthly parents, but we ought to give our hearts to our Heavenly Father and Christ. The Lord God wants your heart. And this simple request is the answer to just about every problem that confronts us. God is saying, give me thine heart. What does God want from you? God wants your heart. Say, hey, the sin problem is not in the head. The sin problem is in the heart. The reason we sin is because we have failed to give God our hearts. It's the foundation of all wickedness and sin. Sin begins right there in the heart. It's sown in the heart and then blossoms. The Bible says the fool had said in his heart. Right? The fool had said in his heart heart there is no God or literally no God for me not so much denying the existence of God as refusing to let God be God no intelligent person can look around at this creation and say there is no God you cannot look into the starry heavens and reject the existence of God unless you're a moron. It's not a problem in the head, it's a problem in the heart. In their hearts, they don't want to hear God. The Bible says, Proverbs 4, 23, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. The problem with the sinner, the problem with the rebel is a heart problem. Jesus said in Mark 7, 21 through 23, talking about the heart, he said, For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness all these evil things come from within and defile the man guard your heart folks give your heart to the Lord that's what God he doesn't really want your hands to work for him he doesn't want your feet to go for him he doesn't want your puny brain what's he going to do with that he wants your heart but hey, when he's got your heart, he's got everything. He's got your hands and your feet and your head. And he's, got you, he's got all of you when he's got your heart. Right? So he says, give me thine heart. We understand the symbolism here, don't we? Folks, the Lord hates half-heartedness. I'll wait till the amen subside before I go on. Do you believe that? God hates half-heartedness. What's the heart referring to? It's not talking about that muscle in your chest that pumps blood. He's talking about your affections. He's talking about your seat of emotion. We understand the symbolism. If you ever played ball, did you ever have a coach that said, get out there and put your heart into this game? Give all your heart. You know, sometimes the team with the better athletes will lose because the other team wanted it more. Right? The team with the best athletes don't always win. Because sometimes they play half-heartedly and they get beat by the underdog. We like to root for the underdog, don't we? He's out there working hard and, and doing his best. And we want to cheer him on to victory. We understand this. He's got heart. He's putting his heart into it. He's giving it his all. By the way, I think when we come to the house of God to worship, we ought to give it our all. We ought to sing with all our heart. Amen? Do you, do you sing half-heartedly? Were you guilty of that this morning? That you only sang half-heartedly? 
We can serve God half-heartedly. I've seen people come to the church and instead of really singing out, they just kind of mumble through the song. And it's not so much that they don't sing. Watch them during the week belt out a country song. Watch them belt out a rock and roll song. Oh, they can belt out those songs, but not the gospel songs. So why is that, preacher? Their heart's not in it. Their heart's in those other, in that other music. They love that. But their heart's not in this. Come on. Their heart's not in what we're doing here. They just go through the motion. They just do it half-heartedly. Like those Laodiceans. Jesus said we're lukewarm. He said that they make God sick to their stomach. God just wants to spew them out of their mouth. Why? Because of their half-hearted worship. Lukewarm. And how many are guilty of that Sunday after Sunday? Why is the heart used to symbolize devotion and dedication and determination? I think it's because the heart is indispensable. You can't live without a heart. They took mine out of my chest last year, but gladly they stuck it back in. After they did a little work on it, I have to have a heart. I, I, could, you know, I could lose an arm and still live. I could lose a leg, an eye, and still, still go on. But man, if I lose my heart, I'm done. The heart is indispensable. So that's why we use it symbolically to talk about the heart and giving our heart to someone. Whoever, see, whoever has your heart has you. Whoever has your heart has all of you. So God wants your heart because he wants all of you. You know, you take a risk when you give somebody your heart, don't you? Right? You ever given your heart to somebody and they broke it? We understand what that means. We take a risk in giving our heart to somebody. They may break it. They may abuse it. They may stomp on it. So some people are very reluctant to give their heart to someone. Hey, but don't. Don't be reluctant to give it to God because he will never abuse it. He will never break it unless by conviction. He'll break your heart for conviction, but that's for your good. But hearts can be broken. These girls get together and they say, did you hear about Sissy? Dreamboat broke her heart. Sissy gave her heart to Dreamboat. Dreamboat broke it. Right? We understand that, don't we? Many of you could testify of a broken heart. But I think you can give your hearts to your parents. When you get married, give your heart to your spouse. Give your heart to that bride or that groom. See, kids, give your heart to your parents now. Then when you get married, give your heart to that mate. Unconditionally. Give your heart to that mate. You're giving your all. Without reservation. But first of all, give your heart to God. God wants your heart. When the heart is on fire for God, you're going to be here come rain or shine. When you've given your heart to God, you're going to want to be here for worship. We've got some elderly folks that hobble in here Sunday after Sunday. You know they're not feeling well. You know that they could just barely get here. But they want to be here. Sister Marie Sparks back there. Marie's here because she wants to be here. She wants to be with her church family. She wants to be in worship. But we've got some young adults and 
young people, they don't mind skipping services. They don't mind missing a lot and do other things. And I'll tell you why. Their heart's not here. Their heart is not in what we're doing. They need to give their heart to the Lord and let God do something with it. When God has your heart, hey, when God has your heart, I won't have to come around and beg you to come to church. No, not if you've given your heart to God. Not if your heart is in what we're doing here. Nobody's going to have to beg you to come to church. Nobody's going to have to encourage you to be here. You're going to be here, rain or shine. Because you want to be here. Let me say this in closing. Your heart was not made to be kept. It was made to be given. See, you need to give your heart to somebody. Who has your heart? If God doesn't have it, who does? See, if you don't give it to God, Satan's going to take it. Satan's going to use some lust of the world to woo you and steal your heart. Steal it from God. You've got to give your heart to somebody. Jesus says you can't serve two masters. You're going to either give your heart to the Lord or to the world. Right? Some of you, some of you think, well, I'm, in, I, I'm untouchable. I don't need anybody. I don't need to love anybody. I don't, I don't need to be loved. No. Deep down, you're aching to give your heart to somebody. You want to love somebody, and you want that somebody to love you back. The heart was made to be given away. Joy cannot come by you living to yourself. It comes when you share your life with another. Don't let Satan steal your heart. Guard your heart. Give your heart to the Lord. And follow him completely. My son, my daughter... Give me thine heart. First, give your heart to the Lord. Young people, give your heart to your parents. Married people, give your heart to your mates. We've talked about that in past messages. And make sure the devil does not steal your heart. As we stand together, with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, preparing for this invitational hymn. I want you to take a moment right now to examine your life. I want you to be very, very honest with yourself. Do what the psalmist said when he said, Lord, search my heart and let me know. Let God examine your heart today. And I want you to be very honest. Does God have your heart today? Is your heart into the things of God? What if you should die today? Would you go into eternity regretting missed opportunities? Right now, would you ask the Lord to come into your heart? Would you ask the Lord to come in and save you and be your Lord and Savior? Would you ask God to forgive you of your sins and repentance? Right now, God's with us. He's listening. Would you pray? Lost person, would you pray and trust Christ? And would you ask him to come into your heart right now?